Our next caller is Sam from Saudi Arabia. Oh, cool. From Saudi Arabia. How you doing, Sam? How can we help you? Hi, how are you? Thank you for having me. No problem. What's your question? Uh, so um, we started uh, the, the month of Ramadan today where we fast the during the day and uh, we eat during night. So my plan is to um, heavy lifting for yani, for free weights during the day. I don't want to heavy lifting uh, during um, the eating window. So my, yani, my, my plan is to work out for 30 minutes of heavy of free weights uh, for 30 minutes maximum. Yani. So um, and uh, my, my, I want to ask you about the nutrition that, that I should take during the eating window. What should I eat? Any yani more carbs, more protein, fats? Okay, that's actually a great question. You know, uh, so many people practice this. I don't uh, think he's going to like your answer, though, right? Yeah, I, no. know, I think I know where you're going to go. Well, with yeah, this. a lot of people practice this. And uh, number one, um, I, I appreciate this practice. I think uh, spiritual practices and spiritual yes. health is very important. Um, as far as your question is concerned, you know, what you would eat during your eating window would be really no different than what you would eat uh, that would be considered healthy for your body uh, if you were to eat all day long. Now, first and foremost, training fasted, totally fine. Not eating right after your workout, nothing really wrong with that. If you have a big issue with that, I would recommend then working out right before your eating window. As far as diet is concerned, now I've trained clients who practice Ramadan and there's a couple common things that I've run into with some of these clients, not all of them, but a few of them, where they do the the fasting window, right? But as soon as the sun goes down and then they can eat, they end up uh, overeating, they end up binging, right? So it ends up becoming a, a fast and then feast kind of mentality. So my recommendation revolves around uh, kind of you know slowing down that initial feeding process. So when you're ready to eat, Maybe eat a healthy meal, give yourself something a little bit of structure. So the first meal you eat is more of a structured meal. Then wait 30 minutes to an hour and then go ahead and continue to eat. I would prioritize whole natural foods, proteins and fats. I would leave carbohydrates uh, towards the end. Just again, in my experience, that tends to reduce overeating. Vegetables also, you could start your meals with vegetables. So kind of prioritize the more important food first. Allow yourself to eat until you're satisfied, but be careful to eat past the point of satisfaction. I'm gonna. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna add a little bit to this. First, I, I I just really think that when when we're doing a practice like this, I think that the main goal is is the spiritual side of this, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and the truth is when I, and I've got this question a lot. I've, I've answered this many many times, and. The normal, the con normally the concern from the person that's asking it is that they don't want to lose their gains, right? They've been training for a while and they're like, okay, Ramadan is here. I don't want to have 14 days where I slide way back. And the truth is you're not, if, especially if you're training during this time, right? If you continue to lift, uh, the the setback that you may have in this these two weeks is going to be minimal and your body will resp respond and rebound right away. So the first thing I would say is um, I wouldn't get that hung up on this when the the real idea and objective of doing Ramadan is is the, the spiritual practice of that right and, and and to be working inward. So and that is a part of health and that's going to only benefit you getting stronger and being better in life. So I, I would I would tell you to do that first and then really if you're asking more specific about food. Uh, more towards Sal's advice, I would really just target, I would target my proteins, fats, and then lots of veggies. Like that's, I would make sure that when I look at my plate of food, I'm getting a high amount of protein because I didn't eat all day long. So I'm probably eating a, a big old piece of meat, having a bunch of vegetables. And then after that, I would have some carbohydrates like Sal's saying. So that would be like my main focus. But again, if you're training during this time, uh, you're already going to be sending a signal to the body to, to to hang on to whatever muscle you have. The main focus um, would would be the spiritual practice for me. I, I I don't do enough of that. I don't do enough of stopping my life and becoming present and working inward. That's why I love this practice. I love that you guys schedule the 14 days every year like this. I think that this is a great opportunity for you to focus on that stuff. And don't worry. 
if you're training, you're going to be okay and you're going to come yeah. right out of it when you, when you get done. Now, I do want to add, uh, of course, your training probably should be uh, a little bit, it should be less easier, intense, yeah. Le yeah. Low, less intensity, slower, um, because you're not eating or drinking. Um, mm -hmm. And so having someone train really hard without food, but especially without fluids or water, um, can cause uh, some problems. So really train very easy. Um, you know, mind how your body is. Personally, again, in my experience, clients have either had success training first thing when they wake up um, or right before they go and feast. But either way, it's uh, you, you still have to be very careful, especially because you're not drinking uh, you know, fluids. That's the big thing I would say be careful for. Does that answer your question? All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. No problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is um, thank you. The, the, your it's practiced by I think something like one and a half billion people uh, worldwide. Wow, yeah. really that many? A huge, mm -hmm. a huge amount of people uh, practice this and run. The, so it's it's thirty days long. They can't eat all day until nighttime, sunrise and sunset. I don't know how long it is. If it's thirty days, or I think you might be right. Uh, yeah. I can I can. Yeah, look he was up. asking about fourteen days, but I believe it's thirty days, right, Doug? It started on the fourteenth, I believe, of April. Okay. Uh -oh. And oh, it, maybe that's why I misunderstood. Go, what you yeah, said. it's a whole and month. It goes, it goes yeah. through, I think, uh, May thirteenth. Yeah. So, and it's no, it's no food, no drink. It's basically you're abstaining from pleasurable things: no sex, no food, no drink. You're supposed to pray a lot during mm -hmm. the day. Um, I thought it wasn't part of the practice. They they choose something they want to give up. Isn't that part of it? Um, I don't know if don't they know. add anything they to do it. That but those for are, Lent, but yeah, it's different. Those oh, are the, maybe maybe that's what I'm getting that. Mixed yeah, up. that's different. This yeah, this is Islam, and this is and it's again no food, no drink, no sex, um, and it's sunrise to sunset. Yeah. So now, do a lot of people actually do? Obviously, it's nighttime that's going to be the focus. But do, do people wake up earlier? You know, so where it's still dark, where they can eat in the morning. Um, I've had clients that'll do that as well. Yeah. Um, so they'll start the day before the sun, right? But the big challenge I've seen is. The you know when you get the to the point the where the sun goes, night. that's right. Yeah, yeah. then the sun goes choices. down, and then it's like I'm going to eat all kinds of. Yeah, crazy and that's food. the truth is, uh, and your answer with the eat mm -hmm. how you normally would eat. I know I, I can I know I know exactly where his where his head is at. It's it is always the I don't want to lose my gains. Muscle. I want to or I want to yeah. build during this process right. still, and it's like really the 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 30 days of low calorie is not going to do anything but probably lean you out and probably mm -hmm. be good for your body. So do it, especially if he's still continuing training, he is not going to regress that much. You might see a little no. bit of a strength loss. You might lose a little tiny bit of muscle, but it's nothing. a total different shift of focus, and I think that you just have to embrace it, and that, that's hard to do because like you're so focused on trying to transform your body and build muscle and all that. You just got to shift your focus. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, if somebody was otherwise very consistent, so let's say 11 months out of the year. They're very consistent with their diet, with their training. Yeah. Their I think it's a great sleep. practice. Yeah, I, I, I honestly think it's a no 30, training, no nothing. I think a 30 day break completely break or easy movement, 100%. you know, maybe focus on mobility. Yeah. If anything, they'll probably get better results. Now I don't, I'm, I'm careful when I say this, cause I don't want people to do this for this reason. I think it's the, the reason should be for the spiritual gains that you get from it, right. not the right. physical gains. But I think the side effect of this honestly would be better Physical, it's like a deload month. You're focusing on other things. You're focusing on maybe on mobility, but really it's a spiritual and it's you're taking a break. Wisdom. This is like, mm -hmm. it's one of those practices that has, you know, stood the test of time. Like in a lot of religions, they do, they, they do these things for a reason because it does benefit your, your overall health. That's right.